Hello everyone, welcome to the second session of the topic Probability, Class 12 CBSC. Today we will be discussing two simple theorems that is Theorem of Total Probability and Bayes Theorem. And these theorems are based on conditional probability and we will solve some problems where we need to apply theorem on total probability and Bayes theorem. So let's start. Let's go through the definition. Partition of a sample space. Now children hope you remember what a sample space is. It is the collection of all outcomes of a random experiment and how do we denote that? We use a letter S to denote the sample space. Now what is this partition of a sample space? Suppose we have a set of events say E1, E2 up to En. We have n events with us. So when do we say those events form a partition of a sample space? Those set of events form a partition of a sample space if it satisfies three conditions. So what are those three conditions? The first condition is EI intersection EJ is equal to phi. What does that mean? If you take any two events, when you find the intersection of those two events, the answer is phi. The elements, no elements are common in those two events. So any two events you take, this will be the case. So they are, these events are pairwise disjoint. So what do you mean by disjoint events? Disjoint events are those events whose intersection is empty. And what is the second condition? The second condition says, when you find the union of all these events, what will you get? You will get the sample space S. So first, step, first one is, first point is, each event, each pair of event if you consider, they are disjoint. Second point is, when you find the union of all these events, you get the sample space S. And what is the last one? If you consider each event, its probability will be greater than zero. You have non-zero probability. Each event has got a probability greater than zero. So any event satisfying these conditions form a partition of a sample space. Now let's see what is this theorem of total probability. So look at this. Let E1, E2 up to En be a partition of a sample space. And just now I said, what do you mean by partition of a sample space? Any set of events satisfying those three conditions. Okay. And suppose that each of the events EI, E1, E2 has non-zero probability of occurrence. Let A be any event associated with S. So, apart from these events E1, E2, I am considering another event A, which is associated to these set of events. Then how do you find probability of A? Now, this A is based on the, so those set of events E1, E2 up to En. So, how do you find the probability of A? P of A is equal to P of E1 into P of A given E1 plus P of E2 into P of A given E2 plus etc. up to P of En into P of A given En. Because En events are there, so that is why we stopped with En. Now how can you simplify this lengthy expression? P of A is equal, now this is a sum of so many terms. So when sum of so many terms comes, we use summation. So sigma, some j ranging from 1 to n, P of Ej into P of A given Ej. This j takes values from 1 to n, okay? And the summation denotes the sum of those terms. Suppose j takes a value 1. So what will be the first term? P of E1 into P of A given E1, okay? Then it's summation, so it's connected by a plus symbol. Next value J accepts is 2. So you get P of E2 into P of A given E2 plus up to 
n the j last value j takes is n so you will get p of en into p of a given en so this is called theorem on total probability now let's see how to derive this theorem okay i use a venn diagram here now this theorem on total probability is for n events so what i'm going to do is i'll just take two events we will prove the result for those two events and then finally we'll extend that to n events okay so look at this you have a venn diagram here let this rectangular region represents a s sample space now i'm going to consider two events what kind of events are they those events whose intersection is empty that means mutually exclusive okay i just consider two events this region i'll just name it as e1 and the second one i name it as e2 e1 e2 now i'll just use some other ink this i represent as an event a so total three things are there e1 e2 and i have an event a which is associated to e1 and e2 and i'm going to find p of a's formula based on theorem on total probability now children when you see e1 and e2 it's clear e1 is this region e2 is that region intersection is empty they are two disjoint set now this region this portion alone is called what is the name of this region alone it is e1 intersection a that is the common region to e1 and a this region alone is called e1 intersection a now what is this half that region is e2 intersection a so what can you say about e1 intersection a and e2 intersection a they are also disjoint nothing is common e1 and e2 are disjoint same way if i take an event a associated to e1 and e2 i can see e1 intersection a and e2 intersection a that is also disjoint okay now what is our aim to derive the formula of p of a from the figure children a is a subset of the sample space so how can you write a a can be written as s intersection a isn't it because a is a subset of s so now let's write that a is equal to s intersection a s is a sample space now from this figure it's very clear e1 union e2 is equal to s s is equal to e1 union e2 not only that e1 intersection e2 that is equal to phi they are mutually exclusive so we just substitute we replace s using e1 union e2 so a is equal to e1 union e2 intersection a i just open the bracket i apply distributive property e1 intersection a union e2 intersection a okay now i apply probability on both sides so p of a is equal to p of e1 intersection a union e2 intersection a p of a is equal to now children we just apply the formula of p of some a union b what was the result p of a plus p of b minus p of the intersection of first two but here we know e1 intersection a look at this e1 intersection a and e2 intersection a they are disjoint nothing is common so when you find that is empty phi 
So what is the probability of phi? That is equal to 0 and we know a theorem that if A and B are mutually exclusive, if the intersection of A and B is empty, P of A union B is just sum of two probabilities that is P of A plus P of B. So here we will write P of E1 intersection A plus P of E2 intersection A. Remaining portion is not there that is equal to. Now P of E1 intersection A, we are going to apply the multiplication theorem on probability which we discussed in detail in the last session. So what is P of E1 intersection A? It is P of E1 into P of A given E1 plus P of E2 into P of A given E2. So what is this actually? It is a probability A. P of A is P of E1 into P of A given E1 plus P of E2 into P of A given E2. This is when we took just two events E1 and E2. So what if I extend this result to n such events? Then I can write P of A is equal to P of E1 into P of A given E1 plus P of E2 into P of A given E2 plus next one will be P of E3 into P of A given E3 plus etc etc. So the last event is En. We will write P of En into P of A given En. So this is a theorem on total probability which can be simplified as sigma some j ranging from 1 to n p of e j into p of a given e j. So here is a proof for theorem on total probability. Okay. So next theorem which we are going to discuss is Bayes theorem which is very very important. You always get questions based on that theorem, Bayes theorem. Now let us see what it is. If E1, E2 up to En are mutually exclusive and exhaustive events, what does that mean? Mutually exclusive and exhaustive events means the intersection, they are pairwise disjoint intersection is empty if I take each, if I take a pair of events some E i and E j where i not equal to j. Second case when you find the union of all those events you will get the answer as a sample space and each event's probability is greater than 0. So you have a set of events like that and A is any event that occurs with E1, E2 up to E n. Then P of E i given A is equal to P of E i into P of A given E i divided by summation P of E j into P of A given E j where j ranges from 1 to n and i is also ranging from 1 to n. This theorem is called Bayes theorem. So now as we prove theorem of total probability, let us see how we can reach this result that is P of E i given A is P of E i into P of A given E i by sigma P of E j into P of A given E j. So left side is P of E i given A. So we start with that. P of E i given A by definition now children what is this actually this is our conditional probability that is equal to p of e i intersection a divided by p of a that is equal to now here in the numerator we apply multiplication theorem on probability that is p of e i into p of a given e i divided by p of a now we know as per our theorem on total probability what is P of A? It is summation j ranging from 1 to n P of E j into P of 
a given e j. This is how we prove Bayes theorem. Now let us see how we apply these two theorems in questions. Now let us read the first question. A person has undertaken a construction job. The probabilities are 0.65 that there will be strike and 0.80 that the construction job will be completed on time if there is no strike and 0.32 that the construction job will be completed on time if there is a strike. Determine the probability that the construction job will be completed on time. So what we need to find probability that the construction job will be completed on time. Now this completion of work is based on, it is depending on two factors, if there is strike and if there is no strike. So what we are going to find that event, let us consider it as A. And this is associated with two events, say uh, E1 and E2. Let us take E1 as an event that there is strike, E2 as an event that there is no strike. And the completion of the work depends on these two. So how do we find P of A? So here we are going to apply theorem on total probability. So what is theorem on total probability? If you have an event A, P of A is equal to P of E1 into P of A given E1 plus P of E2 into P of A given E2 plus etc. Depending on how many events are there, there we will stop. Let's say if it is N, P of En into P of A given En. So now let us write down all the details that is here. So let us consider an event A, event A as the construction job will be completed on time. So A is an event that the construction work is completed on time. And we have two events say E1 and E2. Now this completion is depending on two factors. Let us take E1 as the event that there is strike and E2 as the event that there is no strike. And then how do we find P of A? That is our question. So let us find the formula. We will write P of A is equal to, as this is depending on two factors E1 and E2, it is P of E1 into P of A given E1 plus P of E2 into P of A given E2. Let us fill all the details here. What is P of E1? P of E1 means the probability that there is strike. So let us read the question. Look at the second sentence. The probabilities are 0.65 that there will be strike. So the first answer is ready. 0.65. So if we get probability that there is strike, probability that there is no strike will be 1 minus probability that there is strike. So probability of E2 is equal to 1 minus 0 0.65 and that is equal to 0 0.35. Those two we got. Now just two more terms we need to find that is P of A given E1 and P of A given E2. So P of A given E1 is equal to. Now how do we frame the sentence children? P of A given E1 means probability of numerator given denominator has taken place. So that means probability that the construction work will be completed on time if there is a strike. So from where do we get that? 0.65 that there will be strike, 0 0.80 that the construction job will be completed on time if there is no strike but we need if there is strike. So from where do we get Next sentence and 0 0.32 that the construction job will be completed on time if there is a strike. So our P of A given E1 is 0 0.32.
0 0.32. Now one more term P of A given E2. Now what is that? A given E2 means probability that the construction work is completed on time if there is no strike. So it is 0 0.80 that the construction job will be completed on time if there is no strike. So we will write 0 0.80. Now children if you read the question properly all the details you will get from the question itself and just substitute correctly the values of all the values you substitute correctly in the required places. Okay now let us find P of A. P of A is equal to P of E1 0 0.65 into P of A given E1 that is 0 0.32 plus P of E2 0 0.35 into 0 0.80. Now let us simplify this. This is equal to let us remove the decimals 65 by 100 into 32 by 100 plus 35 by 100 80 divided by 100. That is equal to now let us uh, multiply and see 65 into 32. Two zero eight zero, so two zero eight zero divided by ten thousand plus. Now you have thirty five into eight, two eight zero zero by ten thousand. So that is equal to now we just add numerator, you get zero eight eight four divided by. 10,000 that is equal to 0 0.488 and this is a answer. So this is a probability that the construction job will be completed on time. Okay. Next question, bag 1 contains 3 red and 4 black balls while another bag 2 contains 5 red and 6 black balls. One ball is drawn at random from one of the bags and it is found to be red. Find the probability that it was drawn from bag 2. Now when you get a question, in the question it won't be mentioned like apply Bayes theorem or apply theorem on total probability. We just have to identify which theorem we need to apply. Now compared with the previous, when you compare this question with the previous one, here you a clue is given in the question. There is an in information, additional information which is available here. Uh, what is that? One ball is drawn at random from one of the bags and it is found to be red. So it is clearly mentioned in the question that a ball is taken from one of the bags that we don't know which bag it is but it is red in color that information we have. Now the question is find the probability that it was drawn from bag 2. So if there is any additional information in the question that is if there is any event which you already know then remember children we will have to apply the second theorem that is Bayes theorem. Okay, And the additional information which we know which has already happened we will just name it as A to avoid confusion and the remaining events we will name it as some E1, E2 etc. So let us see what the question is. Bag 1 contains, so there are two bags. Bag 1, bag 2. Bag 1 contains 3 red and 4 black balls. So, so you have 3 red and 4 black balls. While another bag 2 contains 5 red and 6 black balls. So here you have 5 red and 6 black balls. One ball is drawn at random from one of the bags that we don't know. But one condition we know but it is found to be red in color. Find the probability that it was from back 2, that it is drawn from back 2. So the information which we know, let us take it as A. 
A is an event that the ball drawn is red in color. And then let's take the events as E1 and E2. So, and that clue is available in the last sentence. Find the probability that it was drawn from back to. So, I can take one of the events as selection of back 1 as some E1, selection of back 2 as some E2. So, E1 is selection of back 1. E2 is selection of back 2. And what we need to find, find the probability that it is from back to given the condition that the ball taken is red in color. The next step is how to frame the formula. So, this is based on back to right. So, back to the event we have selected as E2. So, next step is we will write the formula. Bayes theorem says P of here. I am going to find what is the probability that it was from back to under a condition. So, back to it is event E2. So, I am going to find P of E2 given A. Now, by definition it is P of E2 into P of A given E2 divided by now sum of certain probabilities comes in the denominator. So, how many terms will come here? There are only two events. So, two terms will come by P of E1 into P of A given E1 plus P of E2 into P of A given E2. Now, our duty is to find all these values. Okay. So, what is E1 and E2? E1 means selection of first bag, E2 means selection of second bag. So, you have two identical bags here. So, let me, what will be the probability of selecting each bag? That is equal chance of selection 50-50 chance. So, we will write P of E1 is 1 by 2, P of E2 is also 1 by 2. So, P of E1 is equal to 1 by 2 that is same as P of E2. Now, what you mean by P of A given E1? So, frame the sentence P of A given E1 means what is A? Getting a red ball. What is the probability of getting a red ball from first bag? Because E1 represents selection of bag 1. Here is the first bag. How many red balls are there? 3. How many black balls are there? 4. So, probability of getting a red ball means it is 3 by total and the total is 7. So, I get the first one that is 3 divided by 7. So, what is probability of A given E2 by? Now, if we frame the sentence, it is probability of getting a red ball from back 2. Coming to back 2. How many red balls are there? 5 red balls are there. Out of the total, 11. So, we will write 5 by 11. So, here we, it is 5 by 11. Now, we substitute in 1 because I named the formula as equation 1. P of E2 given A is equal to P of E2 is 1 by 2 into A given E2 5 by 11 divided by P of E1 1 by 2 again. P of A given E1 that is 3 by 7 plus P of E2 is 1 by 2 into 5 by 11. So, carefully substitute the values because after reaching this step do not make any mistake. Now, is there anything common in the numerator and denominator? 1 by 2 is common everywhere, right? So, I can just cancel it off and that is equal to 5 by 11 divided by 3 by 7 into 5 by, so 3 by 7 plus 5 by 11. That is equal to 5 by 11 divided by, you get 33 plus 35 divided by 77. That is equal to 5 by 11 divided by, so what will we get here? 68 divided by 77. 
that's equal to 5 by 11 into 77 divided by 68. 7. So your answer is 35 divided by 68. That is a required probability. Look at the next question. Given three identical boxes, 1, 2 and 3, each containing two coins. In box 1, both coins are gold coins. In box 2, both are silver coins. And in box 3, there is one gold and one silver coin. A person chooses a box at random and takes out a coin. If the coin is of gold, what is the probability that other coins in the box is also of gold? So, hope you understood the experiment. How many boxes do we have here? We have three boxes. Box 1, 2, Three. And we have coins inside that. In the first box, how many coins are there? Two coins are there and both the coins are gold. In box 2, both are silver coins. So, I will denote SS. And we have one more box left. In that, in box 3, there is one gold and one silver coin. So, I will denote as G and S. G for S. G for gold and S for silver. So, the three boxes are there. A person chooses a box at random and then will assume like equal chance of selection of these three boxes and he takes out a coin. So, he picks a coin from there. If the coin is of gold, so he took a coin and then if the coin is of gold, so we are getting an information here that the person got a gold coin. What is the probability that the other coin in the box is also gold? So, what does that tells us indirectly? Because the only box which has two gold coins is, which is that box? Box 1. So, we are asked to find the probability that the other coin in the box is also of gold or in other words, probability of selection of which box? First box. Now, let us frame the events A, E1, E2, etc. depending on the question. So, first is event A. Now, what is event A children? Event A means something which we know. The coin taken is a gold coin. So, A is the coin is gold. Now, three boxes are there. So, we will have to form three events E1, E2, E3. So, E1 is selection of box 1. E2 is selection of box 2. And E3 is selection of box 3. All the values are ready. Next step is framing the equation and then we find each value separately. So, see the last sentence, what is the probability that the other coin in the box is also of gold? That means, what is the probability of selection of box 1? So, box 1, we took it as event E1. So, let us frame the equation. Probability of E1, given something has taken place, what is that? The first coin is gold is equal to probability of E1 into probability of A given E1 divided by P of E1 into P of A given E1 plus P of E2 into P of A given E2 plus. Now children do not stop here, three events are there. So, one more term we have P of E3 into P of A given E3. So, that is our equation. Now, we just substitute all the values. First step is find P of E1, P of E2, P of E3. Three box equal chance of selection. So, we can assign 1 by 3, 1 by 3, 1 by 3. So, P of E1 is equal to P of E2 is equal to P of E3 is equal to 1 by 3. Next is P of A given E1. 
meaning probability of a given event has taken place what is the probability of getting a gold coin from the first box what is that children that is equal to two gold coins are there from total so it's a sure event so we will get one we get p of a given even is equal to one now comes p of a given e2 probability of getting gold coin from where from the second bag so coming to the second bag in second bag both are silver so there's no chance of getting gold at all so what will you write you will write zero now comes p of a given e3 so that means getting a gold coin from next box see in the third box one is gold the other one is silver so probability of getting a gold is 1 by 2 so that is equal to 1 by 2 now the values are ready we just substitute in our equation so p of e1 given a is equal to 1 by 3 into it's 1 by 1 by 3 into 1 plus probability of e2 is 1 by 3 again 0 into 0 plus 1 by 3 into 1 by 2 so that is equal to now is there anything common here 1 by 3 is common so we can cancel it so I get 1 by 1 by 3 goes here 1 plus 0 plus 1 by 2 that is 1 by 3 by 2 that's equal to 2 by 3 so here is a required probability so answer is ready answer is 2 by 3 hope that is clear now let's move to the next one anode contains five red and five black balls a ball is drawn at random its color is noted and is returned to the urn moreover two additional balls of the color drawn are put in the urn and then a ball is drawn at random what is the probability that the second ball is red so here the question is which theorem will we apply is it theorem on total probability or the second theorem that is Bayes theorem so I told you if it is Bayes theorem one clue will be given in the question and information which you know will be available here is there any sentence which gives you a clue here the experiment is there's an urn which contains five red and five black balls so five red balls are there five black balls are there a ball is drawn at random so you took a ball its color is noted and it is returned to the urn and here it's not mentioned that is whether the ball taken is red in color or black in color just the person notes a color he keeps there moreover two additional balls of the color drawn are put in the urn that means if the person has taken a red ball after noting the color he picks two additional red balls and then he, he puts that into this urn if it is black two additional black balls are kept here okay and then and then a ball is drawn at random so after keeping the balls inside the urn one more ball is taken out what is the probability that the second ball is red so here we don't have any clue that the ball taken is red in color or black in color which ball first ball so no clues available and we are asked to find probability that the second ball is red so second balls probability naturally depends on the first ball so all these this probability of the second one it is f depends on the first ball color isn't it if it is black color or red color there is a change so here we will be applying theorem on total probability as no clues are available here so theorem on total probability means we need to select event a and the events which affects a so what will be event A, the required probability? That is what is the probability that the second ball is red. So I will write A is the event that the second ball is red. 
the second ball taken is red in color. Now I need events E1 and E2. So let's name even E1 as first ball is red. What is the other possibility? First ball is black. That we will name it as E2. First ball is black. And we need to find P of A. So P of A is P of E1 into P of A given E1 plus P of E2 into P of A given E2. Let's name it as 1. What is P of E1? P of E1 means what's the probability of getting a red ball from an urn containing 5 red and 5 black ball. That is the first ball is red in color. So how to find P of E1 children? P of E1 is equal to 5 red balls are there, total 10. So 5 by 10. That is 1 by 2. Now I need to find P of E2. So what is P of E2? Find the probability that the first ball is black in color. So here you have 5 black balls, total 10. So same 1 by 2, 5 by 10. Those two are ready. Now let us find P of A given E1. P of A given E1 means probability that the second ball is red given that first is also red. Once again P of A given E1 means probability that the second ball is red given first ball is also red and keep in mind if you take the red ball first time two additional red balls are kept inside a urn okay so to find this probability i'll just draw the urn here five red five black okay one red is taken you the color is noted you found it is red so two extra red balls are kept so earlier it was 5 red, now plus 2 red comes there. There is no change in the number of black balls. So total balls, total number of balls becomes 12. Okay. So now coming back to the question. This is the situation right now. Probability of getting a red ball given the first one is red. So total how many red balls are there? 5 plus 2, 7. So, your answer is 7 divided by 12. Hope that is clear. 7 divided by 12. Now, I need to find P of A given E2 also. So, next one is P of A given E2. So, how do you frame the sentence? P of A given E2 means probability of getting a red ball in the second time given E2 has taken place. So now what is E2 given? The first ball is black. Probability of getting second red given first is black. So now if I draw a urn, earlier it was 5 black, 5 red. Now you took a ball first time, noted its color, it's black in color. So you are adding two blacks there. So that the total number of balls becomes 12. Now in from this in this situation, what is the probability of getting a red ball? So what is the children? Don't look here, here. Red, we are concentrating only on red ball because the second time we are taking a red. So it is 5 by 12. So the probability is 5 by 12. Now the values are all ready. Now let's substitute in the formula that is in our equation 1. So left side is P of A. So P of A is equal to P of E1. What is P of E1? 5 by 10. I will write as 1 by 2. 1 by 2 into P of A. A given even. So, A given even is 7 by 12. 
7 by 12 plus probability of E2. Now what is probability of E2? Yes, 1 by 2 again into probability of A given E2. So what is P of A given E2? It is here that is pi divided by 12. So that is equal to 7 by 24 plus 5 by 24, 12 by 24 and what is the answer? It is 1 by 2. So here is our probability, our answer is ready, it is 1 by 2. So though the question looks complicated, no children, if you substitute the, if you write the formula correctly, then all the details you can collect from the question itself. So first of all, check which theorem we need to apply. So once again, I repeat, if there is any clue in the question, which you can, if you get any information huh, before hand, then that is Bayes theorem. Otherwise, we are going to apply theorem on total probability. So, let us move to the next one. Next question. A bag contains 4 red and 4 black balls. Another bag contains 2 red and 6 black balls. One of the two bags is selected at random and a ball is drawn from the bag which is found to be red. Find the probability that the ball is drawn from the first bag. So here it is very direct. There is a clue available here that is one of the bag, it is found to be red. One of the two bags is selected at random and a ball is drawn from the bag which is found to be red. So this clue is given here. So definitely we need to apply this theorem, the second theorem that is Bayes theorem. So let us select the event A, events E1, E2, etc. So the clue is our event A, something that has happened. So event A is equal to the ball taken is red. Now we have E1, E2. Now event E1 is See the last, find the probability that the ball is drawn from first bag. So I can take even as selection of bag 1. E2 as selection of bag 2. Now we will write the formula. The formula is find the probability that the ball is drawn from the first bag given that it is red. So that means P of E1 because first bag we have taken as E1. So P of E1 given A is equal to P of E1 into P of A given E1 divided by two events are there. So two terms comes in the denominator P of E1 into P of A given E1 plus P of E2 into P of a given E2. Now let us find all the values. What is, no, I name it as 1. What is P of E1? Probability of selecting the first ball, first bag. Two bags, no, so 1 by 2, 1 by 2 chance. So P of E1 is equal to P of E2 is equal to 1 by 2. P of E1 is equal to P of E2 is equal to 1 by 2. Now let us find P of A given E1. How do we read the sentence? P of A given E1 means probability of getting a red ball from which bag? From bag 1. So a bag contains 4 red and 4 black balls. And another bag contains 2 red and 6 black balls. So it is better we will draw 2 bags. 1, 2. A bag contains 4 red and 4 black. The second one contains 2 red and 6 black balls. Okay, so the figure is ready. Now P of A given E1 means getting a red ball from which bag? First bag. So how many reds are there? 4 reds are there. Total 8. So you get 4 by 8. That is equal to 1 by 2. Now coming to the next one, what is P of A given E2? P of A given E2 means 
probability of getting a red ball from the second bag. So, second bag means two reds are there, total eight balls are there. So, I can write probability of A given E2 will be two reds out of the total eight. So, two by eight that is equal to one by four. Now, we substitute all these values in equation one. So, P of E1 given A is equal to E1 given A is equal to probability of E1 that is 1 by 2 into probability of A given E1 probability of A given E1 is equal to 1 by 2 divided by probability of E1 into probability of A given E1 that is 1 by 2 into 1 by 2 plus probability of E2 into probability of A given E2 that is equal to 1 by 4. So, now let us simplify. Now, what is common throughout? 1 by 4 is common, is not it throughout? So, you will be getting 1 by 1 plus 1 by 2 that is equal to 1 by 3 by 2 that is equal to 2 by 3. So, here is our probability, the required probability is 2 by 3. So, now let us move to the next question. Bag 1 contains 2 red and 4 black balls and bag 2 contains 4 red and 5 black balls. 2 balls are transferred at random from bag 1 to bag 2 and then a ball is drawn from bag 2. The balls are drawn is found to be red in color. Find the probability that the transferred balls were both black. So, it is slightly confusing, but then we will just draw the figure and see. So, how many bags are there? Two bags, okay. Here is bag 1, here is bag 2. 1, 2. Bag 1 contains 3 red and 4 black balls. So, 3 red, 4 black. And bag 2 contains 4 red and 5 black balls. 2 balls are transferred at random from bag 1 to bag 2. So, how many balls? 2 balls are transferred. Keep in mind. From bag 1 to bag 2 and then a ball is drawn from bag 2. So, after transferring 2 balls, we take a ball from here. The ball so drawn is found to be red in color. So, which theorem? We are getting an additional information here. Second time when you take a ball that is red in color. So, definitely Bayes theorem. Find the probability that the transferred balls were both black. So, last the second probability depends on the transferred ball. How many balls are we transferring from bag 1 to bag 2? two balls are transferred. So, what are the possibilities that arise there? It can be both red in color, the two balls can be both black and one more case arise, one red, one black. Okay, so let us see. Let us find out the events A, E1, E2 and E3. So, event A is the clue. The second ball is red in color. Second ball is red in color. Now, even the event even we can take as the transferred ball are red in color. E2 I can take as the transferred balls are are black and the last one one is black and the other one is red. So, these are the events A, E1, E2, E3 and remember we are going to apply which theorem? Bayes theorem. Next step is 
will frame the formula. Find the probability that the transferred balls were both black. So both black means it is uh, E2. So when you write the formula, it should be P of E2 under given condition A because we know second ball is red in color. So let's frame the formula. P of E2 given A is equal to P of E2 into P of A given E2 divided by P of E1 into P of A given E1 plus P of E2 into P of A given E2 plus P of E3 into P of A given E3. So, so many values are there to find here. Let us evaluate P of E1. So, what is P of E1? E1 denotes the transferred balls are red in color. So, probability of getting two red balls in it from the first bag. So, that two, one is transferred and then another one is transferred. So, how can you find the answer for that? So, probability of, we will write like this, R1, R2. R1 denotes first is red, R2 denotes second is red. That is equal to probability of getting a red ball, first one. So, 3 by 7, okay. 3 red balls are there, total 7. So, I will write 3 by 7 into probability of again getting a red ball. That is, we are just applying a multiplication theorem, probability of R2 given R1 has taken place. So, there is a change, 3 becomes 2 and 7 becomes 6. So, it is 3 by 7 into 2 by 6 or you can use combination children, that is 3 reds and then total 7. So, you can write 3 C2 by 7 C2. So, that is equal to when you simplify you get 1 by 7. Probability of E2 that is equal to probability first is black, second is also black in color that is equal to probability of getting the first one black. 4 total 7. So, we will write 4 by 7 into one more time getting a black means 4 becomes 3 and the total is also reduced to 6. So, when you simplify you get 2 by 7. Probability of E3 that is equal to probability of first is black, second is red or first can be red, second can be black. These two can happen. And we know it is same as probability of BR plus probability of RB that is equal to probability of first black, second red. So, first is black means it is 4 by 7, 4 by 7 into next getting a red, next getting a red means Total how many reds are there? 3 reds are there. So, 3 divided by 6. 4 by 7 into 3 by 6. Hope that's I will just draw the figure once again. Three red, four black. Three red, four black. First one is black. First one is black means 4 out of the total 7. So, one ball is gone. That means the total now 7 becomes 6. Second is red means it is 3 by 6. Or first is red. That is 3 by 7 into second is black. So, that means denominator becomes 6. You get that is equal to 2 into 4 by 7 into 3 by 6. The answer is 
4 divided by 7. Okay, so you get 4 by 7 over there. Now E1, P of E2, P of E3 is ready. So this is P of E1, P of E2 and P of E3. Now we will have to find P of A given E1, P of A given E2, P of A given E3. Now, what do you mean by P of A given E1? Probability of getting a red ball given that E1 has occurred. E1 has occurred means the transferred balls are red in color. Okay, E1 has taken place. So, two red balls are transferred here. So, we will be getting one red here. Okay, two red balls are transferred. So, 4 plus 2, it is 6. And what happens to the total? Earlier it was 9. Now it becomes plus 2 that is equal to 11. Total is 11. As we have transferred two red balls. Now coming back to our probability. P of A given even means getting the red ball in the second time given that two red balls are transferred to which bag? Second one. So, from here, concentrate here, what is the probability of getting a red ball? Total 6, 6 by 6 red balls by 11. Okay, so I will write the answer 6 by 11 here. Next one, probability of A given E2. A given E2 means probability of getting a red ball given the condition. What is the condition? Two black balls are transferred. Two black balls are transferred. So, here instead of this two, I will have to write here plus two. Okay, two blacks are added. Now, this number, total number is always same that is 11 because you are transferring two balls extra. From this situation, what is the probability of getting a red ball? So, red ball is 4 itself. So, 4 by 11. So, this is 4 by 11. And finally, we have P of A given E3. So, P of A given E3 means getting a red ball given that one black and one red balls are transferred. So, what all things comes as extra? You are getting plus 1 plus 1 here. 11 is same. From here, what is the probability of getting a red ball? Total 5 red balls are there, 5 by 11. So, you get 5 by 11. So, values are ready. Now, we will have to substitute in this formula that is P of E2 given A is equal to this result. So, now let us substitute that. Let us substitute here. P of E2 given A is equal to first one P of E2. Where is P of E2? It is here 2 by 7. 2 by 7 into P of A given E2. You have 4 by 11. 4 by 11 divided by P of E1. P of E1 is 1 by 7. 1 by 7 into P of A given E1 that is 6 by 11. 6 by 11 plus P of E2 2 by 7 into A given E2 that is 4 by 11 plus P of E3. P of E3 is here is a value 4 by 7. 4 by 7 into P of A given E3 that is 5 divided by 11. So, now we need to simplify the whole thing. Is there anything common here? 1 by 7 is common in the numerator and denominator. 1 by 11 is also common. So, we will just cancel it and then simplify. So, I get 8 on top by 1 by 7 is gone from 
all three. 1 by 11 is also gone. So 6 plus 8 plus you get 20. That is equal to 8 divided by 34. Okay, 8 by 34 which is a required probability. So this was a very lengthy question. But then you know, when you do it properly, you can substitute the values, find the probabilities correctly. Okay, so that is over. Now coming to the last question. A girl throws a die. If she gets a five or six, she tosses a coin three times and notes a number of heads. If she gets one, two, three or four, she tosses a coin two times and notes the number of heads obtained. If she obtained exactly two heads, what is the probability that she throws one, two, three or four with the die? Let's visualize this question. A girl throws a die. So this is a die. If she gets five or six, she tosses a coin three times. If she gets 1, 2, 3 or 4, she tosses a coin 2 times. So it's divided into 2. She is getting 1, 2, 3 or 4. So what happened? The coin is tossed. How many times? Twice. If it is 5 or 6, the coin is tossed 3 times. This is our situation. And notes the number of heads obtained. And the person is noting down the number of op heads obtained. If she obtained exactly two heads. So this is the clue which is available here. Which we can select as our event A. If she obtained exactly two heads. What is the probability that she throws one, two, three or four with the die? So exactly two heads means even if she throws uh, die twice or thrice heads will come. So we don't know which one. So what is the probability that she throws 1, 2, 3 or 4 with the die given that she gets exactly 2 heads. So now let's frame the events A. What is event A? Exactly 2 heads. 2 heads are obtained. And E1, E2. E1 means uh, we'll just take it as uh, getting 1, 2, 3 or 4. E2, let's take it as getting 5 or 6. Now, we need to frame the equation. What is the probability that she throws 1, 2, 3 or 4 with the die which we have taken as event E1. So P of E1 given A is equal to P of E1 into P of A given E1 divided by P of E1 into P of A given E1 plus P of E2 into P of A given E2. Now we need to find four values here. What is P of E1? What is the probability of getting 1, 2, 3 or 4 when a die is rolled? So what is the probability? 4 out of the total 6. So I will write it is 4 by 6. When you simplify you get 2 by 3. Now comes P of E2. What is P of E2? What is the probability of getting 5 or 6 when a die is rolled? So, two, 2 outcomes, 5 or 6 out of the total 6. So, there we get 2 by 6. That's equal to 1 by 3. Now comes P of A given E1. What is P of A given E1? Let's take what is A. Probability of getting exactly 2 heads when the die shows 1, 2, 3 or 4. Once again, probability of getting exactly 2 heads when the die shows 1, 2, 3 or 4. Now see, 
when a die show 1, 2, 3 or 4, a coin is tossed how many times? Twice. So, getting exactly 2 head means, what is it? HH, -h, right? HH. -h. So, HH -h means 1 out of the total, isn't it? When you toss a coin twice, what are the possible outcome? HH, -h, HT, TH, TT. Four outcomes will be there. Out of this, getting two heads, exactly two heads means it is one out of the total four. So, I will write one by four. Hope that is clear children. Probability of getting exactly two heads given even. Even means one, two, three or four appears or in other words, probability of getting exactly two heads when you toss a coin twice. One by four. Now I need to find P of A given E2. So what does that mean? Probability of getting exactly two head when E2 occurs. So what is E2? When 5 or 6 occurs. So if 5 or 6 occurs, how many times we need to toss a coin? The coin is tossed thrice. In that, so when you toss a coin thrice means there will be 8 sample points. From there, what is the probability of getting exactly two heads? That is, I'll just note it down. Exactly two heads means it can be HHT, HTH, THH. That's all, no. Only three outcomes will come out of the total eight. So, P of A given E2, I can write three by eight because three possible possibilities out of the total 8. Now, if I name this as equation 1, let us substitute all the values. P of E1 given A is equal to P of E1 2 by 3 into P of A given E1 1 by 4 divided by 2 by 3 into 1 by 4 plus 1 by 3 into a given E2, it is 3 by 8. Now, let us see how we can simplify this. What is common throughout? 1 by 3 is common. 1 by 4 is also common, isn't it? So, 2 comes in the numerator and in the denominator, you get 2 plus 1 by 3 goes, 1 by 4 also goes. So, 3 by 2 remains here. That is equal to 2 divided by 2 to the 4, 4 plus 3, 7 by 2 and that is equal to 2 into 2 by 7, 4 by 7. So, here is our answer. The answer is 4 by 7. That is a required probability. So, hope you understood these two theorems that is theorem on total probability and Bayes theorem and just identify, read the question properly and identify which theorem we need to apply here. So children, with this we come to an end of this session. Hope you will practice more questions from this area. Thank you.